Hello guys, my name is Afusel. Today we'll be talking about Brafa. Okay, so um, Samuel and uh, uh, Professor Lumumba, so they had uh, a life together. So they were talking about Brafa, talking about how Nigeria maltreated them. So he's talking about many kids in Brafa. So. What I will do, I will just show you the video, so we'll watch it together. So whatever you think concerning the video, please leave it below. And uh, not, not only that, bef before I, should, I could show you the video, please give a thumbs up. Please remember, go and subscribe, okay? It's very, very important, subscribe to our channel, okay? Please do subscribe. So let me just show you the video. And whatever you think about it, please leave it below. The continent. And you will remember that in 1963 when the then 32 heads of states and government met in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, what they grappled with at that, that time was whether the inherited boundaries should be disturbed. But it was then agreed that they should be retained and hence the doctrine of the inviolability of inherited boundaries adopted in 1963 in Addis Ababa and reiterated again in Cairo in 1964. But Simon, I must disagree with you politely on one point. I'm not one who is quick to write the obituary of Nigeria. I know that Nigeria, like many countries, started on a wrong footing. The very manner in which the British put it together, the Lord Lugard approach to the South, and you will remember some of the early views of people like Obafemi Awolowo about the artificial nature of Nigeria, Namdia, Zikiwe, uh, some of the statements of the Saudana of Sokoto, Sahmadu Bello. You will remember the sentiments of Chukwemeka Odume Gwejuku during the meeting in Aburi in the 1960s, which then led to the civil war in 1967 through the early 70s. It is therefore true that Nigeria has had many false starts. There are those who believe that had a buri been complied with, then the current problems would not arise. Perhaps that is with the help of hindsight. And you remember those famous words of Dim Emeka Ojuku, by a buri we stand, and the retort by Yakubu go on, by a buri you shall fall. So that some of the arguments that we put forth are these, that in fact, the whole idea that Nigeria is federal is a lie. Nigerian federalism has never been allowed to work. And there are those who hold the view that if we allowed federalism to work in all its splendor, with self-determination being allowed for the peoples and borrowing from the model of, uh, of Switzerland, then possibly Nigeria would work. But you and me know that there is a cabal within the political class, within the militarized, the politicized military class who love Nigeria to be dysfunctional as it is. My own view is that before we write the obituary of Nigeria, which I would hate to write, and as we look at a pan-African initiative which would de-emphasize the boundaries, Nigeria ought to be renegotiated. If I was an advisor to President Buhari, one of the things that I would do in advance of the election due in the year 2023 is to call an all Nigerian meeting and free all prisoners of conscience and renegotiate Nigeria so that if you want to have the people in what is Biafra have greater autonomy, controlling 90% of the affairs, they are allowed to do so. Those in the Udua Republic are allowed to do so. Those in the Niger Delta are allowed to do so. Those in the North are allowed to do so, so that the Abuja administration only focuses on foreign affairs, national coordination, and defense. If we did that before we go the whole hog, then we would save Nigeria and make Nigeria a better citizen for the new Africa that we want to create, where the inherited boundaries are only valuable 
for purposes of administration, the, the, the passports will disappear, the visas will disappear, and we will have something that was conceived and articulated by people like Kwame Nkrumah in the 1950s. This is the kind of staggered approach that I would take, but I agree with you that as it is now, there is a dangerous diversity, and there are people who are now paying homage to gods of ethnicity as a way of retaining themselves in power, and they don't care about Africa, they don't care about Nigeria, and these individuals must be stopped in their track. And I can't agree with you more. That Africa cannot, in every African, is a Nigeria, and West Africa would be swamped by Nigerians if Nigeria were to break down. That is something that I fear and shudder to imagine. Thank you very much, Professor P. L. Olumuma. Dangerous diversity has always caused the friction between ECAPA and uh, P. L. I, I, we had another conference in Mombasa. And, uh, yeah, you know, but I agree. I agree with uh, with Ms. Simon that there is a dangerous <laughs> diversity. There is a dangerous diversity. <laughs> my 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 push. Oh, and Doctor my Doctor Doctor Lumumba, can I chip in uh, yes, to what before I forget? Immediate reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Lumumba, I am very very happy to see you here today. I am uh, very very happy. Uh, it is a honor uh, to be on this uh, platform with you. And uh, and uh, so I am very, very happy to be here with you today. Uh, you have made a very good point. The point you made, we are very, very clear. You agree with me that, uh, you know, we have a very dangerous diversity in Nigeria, which is not working, which makes Nigeria not to work. You've also pointed a lot of uh, uh, very concerned issues like, the Abori Accord. I will start from there. You mentioned Abori Accord. You mentioned that the Nigeria federal government system is a lie. You mentioned that we need to renegotiate the Nigeria system. You also mentioned that for things to work, that you would advise the man called Buhari to free all prisoners of conscience. You also uh, said that disintegrating Nigeria, uh, you know, uh, you will not give obituary to Nigeria. I, I, you know, all those things I agree with you. But then, one thing I have to tell you, Professor, is that you should know your your status in Africa, as a, as we have in Africa as a continent. You are somebody that your word is being taken very seriously. You advise president, you advise uh, government officials, you lecture them, and they take your word very very serious. So. You have to be part of the solution of Africa, starting from Nigeria. There is no way, no matter how you want to shy away from this truth, it is a fact that you have become a figure that everybody is looking up to. And you must live up to expectation. You must make sure that you leave a legacy uh, that you, are, you deserve. You deserve a legacy of somebody, not just about lecturing the politicians and political leaders in Africa, but you are going to leave a legacy that that of uh, which like that of Mandela Madiba, because for you to be pro, you know propagating the Pan Africa ideology, you are going even if I'm, I, I may even use the word even better and more bigger than what we have in the name of Madiba. Now, for us to solve the problem of Nigeria, you have to put yourself in our shoe. In as much as you love Africa. In as much as you want Africa, the kind of the uh, ideology you have for a better Africa, you have to first of all put yourself in our shoe. Those of us from Nigeria and from Biafra, you have to first of all put yourself in our shoe. What if you are the one? What if you come from Biafra? Would you be saying the same thing? That's, uh, you know, of course, if you find yourself in political class, like we have to be in Nigeria, we don't expect you to change from what you are saying. But what if you are in the position where we are today, where we have traveled abroad, traveled all over the world, and we participate in building this nation, we participate in building some countries where we find ourselves, and we are doing very well. Would you have the same opinion that you don't want to give obituary to Nigeria? The answer is no. So 
I understand also because you, you, you know, you are a very influential person and you teach the, you speak with them. And Okay, thank you. Until until Nigeria understand that the the uh, the Abori Accord, which was truncated, which was you know abandoned, until there is they revisit the impunity done to that Abori Accord, Nigeria can never ever know peace. It is going to be like this, and it is going to get worse every year by year. Abori Accord was the, a sacrilege done to the people of Africa because everything that happened in Nigeria will affect Africa. So the question is, why are people not advising the people in Nigeria to look into the content of the Abori Accord? They have forgotten about it. How many years now? And nobody is thinking about it. Today, we are hearing a lot of politicians advocating for the restructuring of Nigeria. The same thing that was discussed in Aboria Court. It was the same restructure. And when you hear that restructure, you, you watch the body language of the Fulanis that are controlling Nigeria. They don't care. They don't want to know not, because that is not their agenda. The agenda and their purpose in Nigeria project is to take over the entire Nigeria and control it. Professor Lomumba, if a federal government of Nigeria, if the system of the federal government in Nigeria is a lie, why should we continue to live in lies? Why should okay. we continue? Why should we continue? That's number one. Why should we continue to live in that lie? Can and number two, time? number two, if we Can are we going to, time? yes, if we are going to renegotiate Nigeria, we have been renegotiating Nigeria, but the problem is that some of you are not understanding the people we are living with in Nigeria. That is why you need to know the full and least what they are doing before you can think of renegotiating Nigeria. They can never ever accept renegotiating Nigeria. And what if they will never accept it? What then do we do? Another thing is that you say we should free the prisoners of conscience, the, the government. I agree with you. And that's why we are fighting for to make sure that Mazinam Dekano and other prisoners, uh, political prisoners are released. It is also acceptable. It's a political solution. Now, the last thing I want to say is that don't be afraid of a disintegrated Nigeria because disintegrated Nigeria can never stop the Pan-Africa ideology you are driving. You and I are driving. Rather, the disintegrated Nigeria will facilitate that kind of ideology because you are going to work with people that are more civilized. Coming from one country or two countries, or Biafra and Odudua, we are going to work with people that are well civilized and well read like you in order to make that particular a pan africa ideology driving at or you are fighting for agitating for, come to reality but with this current nigeria it can never happen because you see people who are going to be kicking you back and they will continue to kick it back because they don't want it to happen if it happen they are not going to be comfortable in the in, in such africa continent thank you very much thank you very much amelia I think I hand over the battle to you, and I want to make my remarks in three minutes before Piero Lumumba comes back to mm -hmm. counter what Ekipa, and then we move to Okeke, then we have uh, uh, Daniel Tawish and others. My position as a Pan African, of course, I want a united Africa. But the United Africa with a womb bleeding is not what Masanga wants. A United Africa with wounds is what I detest. Pierre is my friend. But I'm always very quick to tell him that if Kwame Nkrumah kept quiet, if, if Sekutura kept quiet, if Samara Machel kept quiet, Patrice Lumumba, Baba Tafaba Lewa, Jomo Kenyatta, Obote, Gabriel Nasa, Priceless, Africa would not be as we are today. 
for me, Dr. David Mazang, I stand for rearrangement of Nigeria. It's a mess. Nigeria needs to be rearranged. The way we have gone to Congo, for me, I'm a military. I'm a military. We met with that Buhari, we could exchange. I don't get any more time now to waste with people like that. Let me give you people listening. In the Congo, we have had rebel activities. 146 rebel organizations. I see coming from Congo to King Uganda. Every day, every morning, every two weeks, three weeks ago, I was on this program and I said, and I repeat, and I support fully what the seven has done. We have Congo. We have the army. We have gone there. And then we have rearranged Congo. Let the UN happen and make noise. Let's rearrange Congo. It is time for big, big countries of this nature. It does not see the south. Where the north flying appear from. Slaughtering them on a daily basis. And then you come here, you come on this, uh, it's good ideas allowed. You cannot clear. If I show you the video today, on how the police went to Ota, Ota, is it Ota State? How the police were beating people. How Boko Haram was beating kids. Beating a Christian, crying. Is this a country? Is this a country that you call a country that we don't want to send an obituary? Let's send it. For me, Miriam, Simon, Professor Piero, my stand, I stand for a better Africa. Africa. But an Africa with Nigeria bullying. Is not the Africa I want. And I get an Africa with Biafrans being killed. An African where Buhari kidnapped people. Where Buhari, other states in the UK, in, in UK, in Kenya, and abducts people. Rubbish. That is not the Africa I stand for. Buhari is known for kidnapping people. Buhari kidnapped Umar Diko when he was a general who had overthrown the government. Diko was found in London at the airport being transported back by the MI6, MI5. Records are there. Today, there are so many people suffering, women, men, children, who have never gone to school since school started. When you look at the programs, the programs of BBC, people live on water. Simon, are you not ashamed to call yourself a Nigerian? When people are living on water, Water, they have built houses on water. You enter your house using a boat. This is the country we want in Africa. Tell me. Anybody who has, I would rather throw my degrees, all of them, six of them, tear them to pieces. I wish there was an army that can attack, that is organizing. That, that, that Buhari is a bad guy. Look at the, 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 the Yes, I'm leaving the stage now. Look let, at the let stage. Me, let, the, let the, me just, I, I think, uh, in fact, all of us are sharing just about the same thing. It is our method uh, difference. 
And and I hold the view, and, and as a younger person, I, I served as an intern with John Garang when he was based in Nairobi. And I remember him saying about Sudan to the Khartoum government. He told the Khartoum government, none of us wants to secede, but make unity attractive. When unity was made and attractive as an action of last resort, we ended up with South Sudan. What we are saying is that all attempts at renegotiating and restructuring Nigeria must be undertaken. The only problem that we have, Simon, and I agree with you completely, is that you have an administration which is not acting in good faith. Yes. And it is the absence of good faith that is undermining and is making everybody suspicious. All of us on a daily basis see footages of people who are complicit in activities which undermine the very integrity of Nigeria. I think it is General Muritala Mohammed who said that if an insurgency cannot be brought down in 24 hours, it means that the state is involved in it. And you remember also that the Buhari administration came to power on the promise that they were going to deal with the scourge of Boko Haram. On that score, we are united. On the score that the people of Biafra, the people of Odudua and other nationalities in Nigeria are entitled to, uh, to, to self-determination, nobody can deny in the same way that we talk about it even in southern Cameroon. The question that we are addressing as it is now, before we dismember Nigeria, is there not a last ditch effort that can be undertaken? Is there, are there not Nigerians of goodwill? Nigeria has the most educated men and women on the continent of Africa. Is it not possible, as I said a little earlier, that there is an all Nigerian meeting at which we will once again unpack the Aburi Accord and say, this is what must be done within this time limit. And if it is not done, then people are allowed to have a referendum as to whether they want to leave Nigeria. So that the people of Wadudu have the opportunity by way of a vote whether they want to leave Nigeria, the people of Biafra have a referendum. And I agree with you, Simon. The fact that our people enjoy self-determination is not mutually exclusive from the Pan-African agenda. It is not. In fact, it is by dint of the enjoyment of the dividends of self-determination that a stronger Africa will be created. But I want us to look at the stage and the process of going about it. The last issue I want to address is this. It is not easy for an outsider or any outsiders like us to have a complete picture of the situation. And therefore, we must admit that some of the comments we are making are being made on the basis of ignorance because we are not on the ground. To that extent, I must concede. Thank you. Even as we do so, you who are on the ground must be able to listen to the outsider Sometimes the voice of the outsider is what stops total destruction because we mean well. Yes. We mean well, and we know that you are people have been suffering, and we don't want them to continue suffering. So understand us as friends of goodwill yes. who may not be in a position to completely empathize, but our intentions are good and noble. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor. Yes. You cannot negotiate with a madman. Exactly. A man who doesn't like negotiations. A man whose job is to assassinate people, to kill people, to renate people. How do you negotiate with him? How many people are dying in Onitsa, Enugu, in southeastern Nigeria? Professor, you are saying we are outside. We are not outside. We are there. We know the number of people. If I show you the videos that I get every day from the ground, how 
more people are being slaughtered. Africa must stand up. The AU must stand up. We cannot go on calling ourselves African Union mm. when these guys are suffering. If you look at the number of refugees that Kenya is receiving in Kenya from Nigeria, it's huge. Uganda, Zimbabwe, South Africa, all the Afrans are out, are being slaughtered. They have left. Some who have remained there are being eaten. Mm. Buhari has become another Idi Amin, a cannibal. He eats people now. He cannibalizes people. Dr. Matanga. What head of state is this? You call him a head of state? I am waiting for him to go to London to a hospital again. I am myself going to be there. Because that is the way I finished the Abaja. And that Obasanjo is saying something this morning very wise, very nice. Obasanjo, it is Matanga and the rest of the people who went to the Nigerian embassy, High Commission every Friday for us to stand and demand the release of Obasanjo. I took part in the demonstration with Chief Abiola in prison and another gentleman, an activist, whose children I still meet up to today. It is sad that we have kept quiet, we are keeping quiet, the population is being wiped out. God, I don't know what, who, how our Nigerians will remarry in the future. Because all the girls in Nigeria have been taken by Boko Haram. There are very few left. You wake up in the morning, you find Boko Haram has kidnapped 60 girls, 20 girls, 100 girls. Oh my God! Is there no rule of law here? Can Surely, Buhari was a general. If the general has failed, as, as Piero is saying, Mutala said, if the war cannot be won within 24 hours, then the army itself is involved in the war. And I want to put it, submit to you, Miriam, that it is true, the Nigerian army itself is involved in the killings of these people. That's why the war cannot end, the killings cannot end, Boko Haram cannot stop. The country is collapsing. Professor, we cannot hide anymore. Either we move as AU collectively with our voices and do one thing, call for reorganization, rearrangement. Use any term you want. Give the Biafrans a referendum. Give states a referendum the will to change, the will to govern themselves they will to keep security. When I looked at the documentary of BBC Miriam, I was very touched. So many beings are living above water, in water houses in the Delta region. Houses are built in water. A man, a BBC Nigerian man, goes back home. I wouldn't do such a documentary to my country, Uganda. I would refuse the money because I wouldn't like to show a white man that this is how primitive we are. And I get it from me. I'm a different, made from the different iron. I wouldn't. I can't go and do a documentary of that nature in my own country to flash it to the world where people are living on water. Gangs are killing people. A gang is admitting they are killing people. These are not stones. They are killing people. Is there a rule of law? Is there order here? Buhari has lost it. Nigeria is falling apart. I submit, Miriam. All right. Uh, Simon, I see you've raised your hand. Would you like to respond to some of the issues? There is. There are yes. other people that, Simon, let Mr. Ben Okeke, do you want to speak? Simon, we shall 
give you bread of time. All right. He said, okay, okay, do you want to speak and make some contribution, quick ones? Yeah, Dr. Mastanga, uh, good evening on my side. It's almost uh, midnight in Thailand here. And I thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here. And I also greet Professor Lumba and my brother, uh, Mr. Simon Epa from Finland. Uh, I oh, greet God. everyone and I've been hearing what is going on. Like what uh, uh, Mr. Simon said, that we have a dangerous uh, diversity in Nigeria. So the dangerous diversity, if I may just say something on this with a submission of Professor Lumumba, the Biafrans have been, or our activities in Nigeria, have denotes that we want a united Nigeria because there's nowhere, no state in Nigeria where you will not find a, a Biafran man. And they are doing their business they are doing their job diligently according to what the culture and what those countries or, or what those states want in their state. But today, what the Biafrans are suffering in the hands of the current regime, Mohammed Buhari, is so alarming that we cannot take it anymore. I think uh, a divided Nigeria, we serve the Africans and the whole world better than having a united Nigeria. Why I said this, uh, before the emergence of uh, uh, Buhari's regime, Buhari said in his campaign that he's going to end Boko Haram in three months, that he knew that he's going to end Boko Haram in three months. But today, security in Nigeria, look at what is happening in the Northeast, Look at what is happening in the Southeast, which happens to be the best or the, the, the calmest uh, region in Nigeria today. You see what the army is doing over there. So I will say that I support, I strongly support the division of Nigeria. And also, we have to notice that we, the Pan-Africanists, you understand? have to bear in mind that it's not only the Biafrans. So we are bleeding on Dr. Matanga, uh, Professor Lumumba, like uh, my brother, Dr. Simon, the uh, Simon Eba said that you are well respected in the global community or in global politics. There are some people who we speak of today uh, and the Western world, or will I say the uh, those in power we listen to. We might be uh, small or uh, people will not he hear our voice when we speak, but I think if Professor Lumumba could stand very firm or strongly and uh, that Nigeria, that he support Nigeria should be into uh, different countries. I think some of the world leaders today will listen to them. Even you, Dr. Masanga, which I know you always uh, uh, converse or you've always be in a situation whereby you have the downtrodden in Africa. Uh, I always start with you and when I talk with you, I, I, I thank you for your courage and I thank you for how brave you are because it's not everyone that will speak to the truth even when uh, so many people will try to find a kind of diplomatic way to uh, Maneuver and do what I do. So I think uh, Africa and Nigeria, which is the major topic today, is falling apart. And I believe and I pray so that it falls into pieces that will have our sovereignty ourselves being the Biafras. I thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much, um, uh, Ben Okeke. I want now to give uh, Mr. S Y L. I don't know. I He's going. Even if you don't send an obituary, 
it is going down because every morning you wake up professor you hear another story so are you ready is 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 uh, is he on the line is he on the line he's on the line yes okay sorry okay He's not coming on the line yes, so now. Ben, Ben, Ben. Uh, I know it is late in the night, so you may want to retire there in Thailand. But I agree with you completely. The only thing that I uh, would want to guard against is a disorderly dismemberment of any country. And I said this before. I remember I was in Ethiopia, and I did say that Africa. It's in danger of breaking down many African countries. But if you want countries to secede, the process of cessation must be orderly, and it must be after every attempt has been made to rearrange governance. I can't agree with you more that uh, successive administrations in Nigeria, particularly the current administration, has conducted itself in a manner that has not. And it's but I Nigeria, it is early days yet, and Simon, I want to address you very directly. I still believe that before we ultimately write the obituary of Nigeria, efforts must be made, and there are many, many Biafrans and many people do do, and a few sprinkling of individuals in what is not normally loosely refer to the Aousa Fulani group, who believe that Nigeria ought to be reorganized. I would want to hear your thought. It was an administration post war which says the Afrans have been mistreated, Dudu have been mistreated, the Delta people have been mistreated, our federal government has been a lie, we now want to make the federation work. How would you respond to such a administration, Simon, and him or KK in Liberia? Simon. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Should I, should I start? Yeah, make it. Uh, yeah. All right. How would you respond? Well, the, the, uh, uh, Why do people decide that they can federate and the, the, the damage, the wound that Nigeria state has infiltrated into our people has caught, the wound has caught so deep that no amount of negotiation may solve the problem of disintegrating or succeeding. I don't think that uh, there is any arrangement that will solve of over five minutes. I don't think there is any arrangement that will solve the continual ethnic cleansing massacre people. I don't think there is any arrangement that will solve the burning and the annihilation of the Afra people, including the land. So this wound has been caught so deep that no arrangement. And first of all, we don't trust no government that will come today. Nigeria setup is not possible for any government to come today and say they want to reorganize something because you need to understand the deep root of the agenda and ideology of the people from the northern Nigeria. You can be able to say that. So we under, we wear this shoe, we know where it is paining us. So, Professor Lomum, it is not possible. Now, the second oh, thing, I hear you. The second, okay, okay, the second okay. point, just, just one minute, just one minute, very important, just one minute. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to, okay. I want to uh, tell our Professor Lumumba that since uh, you are viewing this thing from an outsider, okay, you have to continue to believe in what we say until you to hear a contrary opinion, a very objective contrary opinion. That's all I want to say. So for now, since no other people are coming to challenge what we are saying, you have to believe us. Because everything we are saying is available, you can see it yourself. Like Professor, like Dr. Max Matanga said, they are seeing an order. So you believe our plight. You begin to hear another contract 
object one. Thank you. Hey, Simon, let me tell you one thing before Delta and others come in. There is no better ally who one who is persuaded by force of reason. Yes. So if you want to, if you recruit people by way of force of reason, those will be allies who understand the issue. And I think it's need, and perhaps this is one of the happening through this problem, need to lay bare issues on the ground in Nigeria and in Biafra consistently so that those who have doubts and those who have no information get this information and then when they are speaking they speak from a position of knowledge and confidence yes okay that's cool let's play one clip just for two minutes one clip and the product get the where the nigerian army police the DSS something, they are together in order state. Play that clip. Leave the clip of Kaining, one Nigerian Christian. We shall play that one at another time. The one where they went in order state two, day, two days ago. And how the people. Let's play that clip. The clip will end in two minutes. So let me come to Tawish. Tawish, for me, my hands are already clean. We need to, something must be done on Nigeria. The state is gone. A country that produces oil and the people sleep on water. The houses are made out of water. A boat. You are going on a boat. You are entering from water to the house. My Jesus Christ. Is, is this a nation? And then Buhari does not even care. People are coming from the north. Killing those thousands. The Biafrans are being slaughtered on a daily basis. People are saying give us only. The freedom. The independence. If possible, the referendum, let's choose. Do we want to remain together? The marriage is not worth it. Why don't you give them that democratic right for them to choose? You can even stagger like a Iran Union and Britain. They did a, a marriage was over. The marriage was over, but they staggered the departure. Nigeria needs that strategy, a formula where we can stagger. Even if when the Africans said they want to go, give them time to leave. You can stagger them and they don't give at all some so that they destroy, which is the worry of Professor Pierre Olumumba, that we could get more problems in doing that. But the people have been demanding for a right, a democratic right of a random. And then nobody can give them a, a democratic right of a referendum. Somewhere or some uh, Dr. David Massa, thank you, our colleague uh, panelist uh, drawn from all over the world. I did, Dr. Masanga, this is a very, very uh, good uh, discussion we are having tonight. And um, from where I sit, I really can understand and feel uh, the bitterness, uh, the anger, the frustration that uh, mostly the Biafran people are having. And when I listen to Simon speak and others, really, I can, I, I can have that feeling that they've gotten to a level where if it is not about uh, that uh, total freedom, then there's nothing else that can really replace, regardless of whether we can continue uh, to have these negotiations. Because uh, as we speak today, the people of uh, Biafra have only but been asking for President Buhari and even other regimes to adjust but allow a referendum to take place so that they can determine uh, their fate. Maybe it is going to provide a solution to this problem. It is not. It may not be guaranteed that, that uh, maybe having a referendum may end up in the people of Biafra uh, maybe getting that which they have been pursuing all along. 
But if that is the only thing they've been asking for, they've been agitating for, it is what has made so many of their people really to be killed, most of them to be displaced. As we speak now, even Namdi Kanu is still actually being held in custody. I think Dr. Masanga will go to a level where uh, President Buhari should get out of the insensitivity that is in his heart and mind and allow the people of Biafra really to have this referendum. Because through that, even the world, even the African continent, even the people like ourselves who have been advocating and lobbying for the indigenous people of Biafra, who have been asking and uh, petitioning President Buhari to allow this referendum to take place, would have made a, a stride or would have made a, a, a very, would have made a, a step in as far as uh, this agitation is concerned. So I totally agree uh, with the likes of uh, Simon and others uh, that uh, this is a moment where the people of Biafra must be allowed really to go through this referendum. And if the determination will be that uh, Nigeria has to go separate ways. In fact, Dr. Masanga, it is not even falling apart. My thinking is Nigeria has already fallen apart because if you have and almost half of a population of a nation are really um, going through a different direction and asking for this referendum where most of their people have been killed, yet President Buhari does not want to listen, does not want to sit down and have negotiations. That is why you see there's a lot of frustration being exhibited. These negotiations have never uh, actually borne any fruit ever since uh, because, again, what makes it difficult for President Buhari and others in his regime really to allow this referendum to take place? Because he knows by the end of the day, the people of uh, Nigeria will vote overwhelmingly for the Biafran to have a nation of their own. And I think that is the worry that President Buhari is having. So he wants to continually hold them and have them around to continually frustrate them. And this, this is not the, what we want in the continent of Africa. So I agree largely with uh, Simon and even most of the viewers uh, from, uh, from largely from, uh, of course, uh, Nigeria and particularly the Biafrans, that the only thing that will guarantee them the freedom that they have been uh, pursuing all along for over 60 years will be that referendum. I, I don't think that is asking too much from a regime, Dr. Masanga. I do not think that uh, they, they're doing a very big, they're committing a very big sin by just asking President Buhari or that government of Nigeria really to allow them to have this referendum. So I agree largely that this will be the only route uh, for the people of Nigeria and particularly the Biafrans to determine the fate of this uh, agitation that they have been having all along, Dr. Masanga. I submit. Thank you very much, Tawish. You are of the view that the only route left is less than people of Biafra decide what they want. They have decided they don't want. The marriage is not there. If a wife says, I don't like you, you want to force the wife. You want to cut his neck. You can't. They can't. They, there's, no, there's no love between, <laughs> between the Biafrans and the rest of the people. Even if you call one million years to come, or you could fought a war, left, died, there are people going to fight and die, just rearrange. The problem of Nigeria is political solution, not judiciary, not murder, not torture, not rape. The problem of Nigeria is a political solution. Nigeria needs a political solution. Mr. Buhari, Whatever you are, listen to me. You have not studied more than I have. Although you went to school much earlier. I, I studied political science. I don't see anywhere in the way of Solomon, the current statement that military are eating each other. The military, look at this video before you in the poll on the phone. Look at the video. This video is from Nigeria. Today, watch it on your phone. Video, video. Comprising the military and the DSS stormed the camp in Ota. Ota in uh, Musi. Yeah, we got there, uh, we noticed that the community has been deserted. Boys have taken over the community, they've picked up for, for themselves. And that is the pride of insurgency. There is no money, no sound. 
that everybody has to be there from this time. And in course of the raid, the, well, the security forces were able to rescue the aid from Okiwin. Yeah. It's a year that Okiwin was kidnapped and some days ago. And then we discovered a lot of decapitated bodies. And surprisingly, surprisingly, in the 21st century, we need to practice cannibalism here. Because we saw, saw, saw human flesh being roasted. So it's very, it was a nice shock. So we recovered a lot of vehicles. We saw a lot of dead bodies. What they do is to kidnap. They kill some of them. Some of them behead them. And then they roast. Yes, we have arrested a good, a good number of them. Of course, they engaged the security forces, the military, the police, and the DSS. They engaged and they made a lot of arrests. And I want to commend the security agencies in the most states. The DSS, the army, the navy, the police, the security for putting their heads together and making sure that at least you more people who come from to celebrate this. That has been a very thing of war. Wondering how the local government like can you can abandon in the hands of criminals and enemies. From what they have seen, can you agree with me? There are not criminals and enemies. 20 seconds. Who has no future? Who has no plan? Who are killing human beings and roasting human beings? Eating human beings? Cannibals? Yes. Are we supposed to treat Ten seconds. You want to ensure that all this is close. In five, four, three, two, one, studio. Thank you very much, viewers and the listeners all over the world. That is part of the video. I, it is a long video where the government that was sent to protect the people turned on people, arrested 50 years. You can see for yourself, it's a long one. We cannot finish. So every day we get, we get even worse ones. Worse. Worse happening in Onitsa, in Enugu. All those places, what happened? All those places, there are so many things happening in those places. Uh, Biafrans are being killed. They are being, just for a simple reason, some of them are younger people, they have no children to leave behind, they have died. So, is that a state that you think should remain? Where is African Union? Where is the United Nations Security Council? Don't we see these things? Are we not seeing this country bleeding? Paul, before I know Professor wants to go, let's hear from Paul, another Nigerian or Biafran from whatever it is, because they don't. You see, I'm, I am sorry. Uh, we are talking about the falling state. Just for the part. So, Paul, tell us. Good evening, everyone. My name is Paul. I'm calling it from the uh, United States of America. I just got a few questions uh, to ask uh, uh, Prof. Molungo. Professor uh, Molungo. Yes, and a few comments. You know, what have you done since uh, Mazenam Bekalo was uh, kidnapped in Kenya? See, now, I, that's what I want to know. And also, another question I want to ask him since uh, he wanted Nigeria to be renegotiated or whatever, he just want Nigeria to be there, he don't want to write a rest in peace in Nigeria. Okay? What is he going to do to Boko Haram? Fulani has men that are Fulani bandits that are terrorizing the whole Nigeria. Because even if he wants to restructure Nigeria, he restructure Nigeria. The Fulani has men that are terrorizing the whole Nigeria, they are still going to be there. What are you going to do with them? If you go to a uh, northern part of Nigeria, this place is uh, taken over by the Fulani. 
not Christians, how most are Christians. They, all of them have been taken away in their uh, in their villages. The Jews come. This is a clear evidence to show you that Nigeria is not a war. There is no place we find a refugee camp, if, if not in a war zone. Part of your land, they are at, uh, some of them are in refugee camps. This is clear evidence that Nigeria is at war, that a full army has a war. Indigenous people of Nigeria out of their spread. If you go to Central, uh, North Central, which is a middle belt, they call the North Central. Right now, as we are talking, those areas, Fulani are killing the indigenous people. The Nigerian government are not doing anything to show you that the Nigerian government are the ones sponsoring Boko Haram. So that's the point. How is Patrick, uh, 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 Patrick Molumba is going to solve this problem of killing? Thank you. Thank you very much. On the question of Namudi Kaku, Professor has talked for a long time. Simon, myself, we actually we are taken unaware of the events that took place. We didn't even know that Namdi Khan was in Kenya when we actually interviewed him for three months before his capture. We didn't know. We only discovered he was in Kenya. But the matter is in the police. Uh, not in the police, in the courts of Kenya. Professor Wajikona, Wajikoya, another professor who is a friend of mine, one of the people that I helped to go to school in London, Wajikoya professor, if you ask him, he will tell you. We have encouraged him to take up the case in Kenya, and it is in the courts of Kenya. And as a result, we cannot maybe discuss much on a matter which is in court, which will be finished maybe this month or next month. The rest, Professor PLO, can, he, no, can, can he answer no, your thank, well, thank you very much. First of all, of course, the matter is sub judice, but, but my own view is that a lot more. I remember there are individuals, including Simon, I think, were involved at some stage in the early days when we wanted to have this matter taken to court. And I suspect, and I'm saying this rather guardedly, that a lot more work ought to be done to support the case that is in court. Because I think there was a sense in which uh, somebody hurried to court without doing certain fundamental groundwork. But I leave it at that stage. On the question on what ought to be done, I think let us not run ahead of ourselves. Everybody agrees that there is a crisis in Nigeria. Everybody agrees that Boko Haram is a terrorist organization. And in my view, to ask an individual such as myself, what would I do, is, is not a proper question. Let me just be direct. It says, what is the duty of the Nigerian government and the African Union and ECOWAS in dealing with such terrorist organizations? That would be the right question. Individuals such as myself can only raise voices. And I think that I'm one of the very few Africans who speaks consistently and boldly about this. And that is the only contribution that I can make. Beyond that, I think you'd be expecting too much from individuals. Individuals can only do what we are doing. I don't have an army. I don't say it. I'm not a head of state. What else can I do beyond raising awareness in the manner that we do boldly and consistently around the continent and around the world? I would want the gentleman to run to my question. What else does he want us to do that we don't do, given our limitations as individuals? Let him respond to that question. Because, David, there is also the tendency of individuals to expect individuals such as us who raise our voices to do what we cannot possibly do. I want him to respond to this question. What does he expect oh. individuals to do yes, beyond Paul. the awareness that we are raising? Yeah, we have raised awareness. Yeah, what what else do you want us to do? What do you want 
Before 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 that uh, happened, please, uh, Professor Lumba, I am very very yeah. happy that uh, you mentioned uh, something here yeah, from the beginning. You know, I'm not going to go into details because of uh, the profession and all that. You, you know how what we have done. You know how I have reached you about this particular question. This person is asking, of course, not like that particular question, but when it has to do with Temazin Amdikano abduction. Uh, you know how I started, you know how I reached out to you, and I know your promise, and I know how seriously you take that particular uh, issue and case. And I like the fact that you have mentioned it here. Uh, you mentioned Simon from the beginning, and then you also mentioned that uh, something uh, more ought to have been done, you know, by grand work. So I'm happy that you mentioned this. It is a record. The record I want to just point out is that when this all happened, I know how ready you were, and I know that you are still ready to help in this situation. And I reached out to you, and you gave me your word, and it is going to be on record. And I want to make it publicly here that, that you were ready to go to work. But today we are still, people are coming to ask you questions because they don't know what have happened and what have transpired. And it's very sad because... Uh, I respect you so much. When I reached to you, you were ready to take the, 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 the uh, you know, you were ready to just go all out. It and, is uh, not, uh, Simon. Yes. It is not, it is not on the PLO. Who yes, I know. But, you know, yes, I know. You, you are, of course, of course, I'm, us, you are, yes, you, you as well. You as well. But, you know, I am just addressing the question. You understand? Because they ask, yeah. he asked uh, Professor Lumumba. So, you know, one thing is that when they, they see us talking on social media, they don't know what we are doing behind. I know what, what we have done, and I know what has transpired, and I know what Professor Lumumba was ready to do. And they, they don't know about it, because we don't talk about it. Yes, because I gave, it is me, I gave you the number of Professor Lumumba to contact him. Exactly. He's the only constitutional lawyer. Exactly. And arrange this issue. And exactly. Because we didn't understand, some of us, up to today, that means that you have been condemned. Yes, which is very bad. Which is very bad. Which is very bad. I have been a friend of Biafran for six years doing voluntary work without anybody giving me one one dollar. One dollar. Mm. And when this happened, I didn't know where this gentleman was. I didn't know. Had I known that this gentleman was in Kenya, mm. I would have not taken an interview. Let me tell you Nigerians today. I will not. He requested me for the interview. I did not request for the interview. But had I known that he was in Kenya, I would have advised him. He told me he was in London. I didn't know he was in Kenya. And therefore, this matter is before court. We don't want to discuss much. The Kenya government is in court. Mm. The, the, the family is in court. I'm happy the brother has understood my our position, my position, I did my best. I have done my best. I brought the, 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 uh, the stars of the Biafran people on top. And everybody talks about Biafra. For the last six years, I've suffered being harassed by Buhari regime, by the embassy, wherever I go. I am not bothered. But because I fight for the truth, that if you are oppressing people, People asking for a referendum. You don't give them a referendum. You send people to kill them at night. Then you, what type of business is that? Just, just, uh, just, uh, Lumum, um, uh, Prof, uh, Dr. Matanga, just for the record, that our brother do not need to answer question from uh, Lumumba. It is not necessary. The only thing, I, I, the, the only thing I want to make uh, plainly here is that Professor Lumumba has made something very, very important. He made a very important point. And point. He said more, you know, he, he believed that more, more of underground work should have been done. But let me tell you, I reached out to Lumumba on a, on a directive, directive given to me. The question every concerned Biafra should be asking is why is Professor Lumumba not involved in this case? So, because I got a direct, a direct directive to get him involved. I am making this public for the very first time. I got a direct a directive 
to get Professor Lumumba involved in the case. So when people come here and they see what we are doing on social media, they think we are just making, making a, a, a broadcast. I reached out to Professor Lumumba and he was ready. And today he has made a comment which I like very much, that more of underground work should have, ought to have been done. And it was not done. But the person who had this problem gave a directive that I should reach to Professor Lumumba. And I did. So anybody coming here to ask Professor Lumumba, what are you doing? Have you asked yourself a question? Because this is what you don't know. So when I rise up and begin to talk, I have a reason. Because I made it specifically clear that Professor Lumumba should get involved. So the question today is that why did the people who have the privilege him get involved refuse him? Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Lumumba music about that comment you made and don't 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 talk more. Yes, we would like to. Yes, the piano is not very amused. Because he wasted a lot of time preparing, trying to do more about this case. Then all of a sudden, it was taken somewhere else. It's not a problem. It, it, we shall wait. It is in the courts. Let's see how it comes. But let's forge on. Let's tell Buhari that there is need to release Namdi Khan. Namdi Khan is a political scenario. Namdi, the problem of Nigeria needs political solution, not rendition. Not the judiciary. Even if you kill one million, you will not solve the problem of Biafra. You will not. You have to give them what they want. Marriage is not forced. Marriage is an agreement. You don't go into marriage and force somebody that you stay in the house until I come back. I think I'm not agreed to what you want. But the biggest problem is Buhari is not willing, not ready. Even to talk to people who are reasoning on radio, on TV, on social media, he blacked this, all of them as very bad people. Yet people are telling him that the, the state is falling apart. Gentlemen, time comes, as Shakespeare said, there comes a time when you come, you take the stage, and calm down. I will now give you closing remarks. And uh, before I go to the closing, one oh, young man, one just one a one. minute, there's a young man, Daniel Songa, make your comments in two minutes. Daniel. Thank you very much, Daniel. You are not there. Therefore, I will begin by giving each one closing time, make a parting short. Let's see how best is this country falling apart. If it is falling apart as it is, what can we do? I mean, Pierre is laughing, but the serious <laughs> the country has <laughs> fallen apart. Because at the moment, Everybody is kidnapping everybody. You know, what Simon told you is correct. What does the video? People are kidnapping each other. They take people for ransom. They take girls, younger girls. This country needs a deep, a very immediate approach. A U, UN must step in. What does not want United Nations troops to under remove Boko Haram? Why? Why is he part of the Boko Haram? Those are the questions that linger in my mind every time I talk about Nigeria. Let me begin with our own people. Let, let then, me let me make my let comment. Me first of all, professor. yeah. First of all, let me say how uh, very glad I am, uh, particularly when I hear from somebody like Simon, Ben, and indeed all the contributors, because this kind of engagement is also part of education. Uh, education by people on the ground, people who on a daily basis are involved with the Biafra issues. And one of the things that I've, I've learned, and, and, and this is a major takeaway for me, 
is the fact the wound has become so cancerous that even those of us who are recommending a gradualist approach must warn ourselves that we do not appreciate the gravity of the matter. And I stand warned accordingly, and I believe that those who are in a similar position as myself are warned, and I believe that the Nigerian administration should also be warned that perhaps the Rubicon has been crossed, and when they make recommendations, there is a, a class deficit which makes it difficult for the people of Biafra and indeed Odudua to believe that they are negotiating in good faith. So that is the kind of uh, takeaway that I have, but I believe the people of Nigeria are owed a duty by the current administration to ensure that deaths do not occur in the manner that they are and people's rights are not trampled underfoot as we hear and see on a daily basis. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Simon. Closing remarks. Thank you. Thank on you. why you listen to the others, then you close. Okay, maybe I can listen to them and then I will close. Mr. Okeke from Thailand. I know it is past midnight in Thailand. You should go to bed. Madame, yes, is uh, Madame is waiting, but make some comment. It, it, it's an important topic for me, so I don't have to sleep. Uh, thank you very much for all the contribution, uh, especially my brother uh, Simon. Uh, I know everybody is working very hard, especially. Dr. Matanga, I always talk with you, like I said, uh, on daily basis, even for more than a year or two years, we've been in contact, and we always talk uh, about Nigerian issue, pan-African and African continent uh, problem. Uh, I wanted us to look at this this way, not only Nigeria, like what Professor said, what have AU done? What have you endured? These are things that we have to put much pressure from the Pan-Africans, like Dr. Masanga, like a Professor. If we can all put our strength in one basket to put much pressure on the government or on the superpower like uh, uh, UK, because I know today what is happening in uh, Nigeria and other African uh, states. It's not just from uh, internal problem because it is a standard for me because uh, when you look at the involvement of the external powers like US, France and so many things, these are the problems we have in Africa. We'll say this. In Nigeria, our major problem is UK. Because of what they gain in Nigeria, they also perpetually want Nigerians to, su to suffer or have a lot of crisis. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, so, so I think uh, in my own idea or ideology, I think we should harmonize ourselves and put much pressure on the international community like AU and United Nations to do something about Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dawish. Uh, Final comment in a minute, one minute. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Masanga, and thank you, uh, of course, uh, colleagues and colleagues for the submissions you made. And I, I think, Dr. Masanga, from uh, li listening to the speakers and the submissions I've made, there's something that comes out very clearly, uh, that uh, in as much as we continue to talk about this matter, this uh, problem in Nigeria, the people of Biafra are still and remain determined that the only way and solution to this crisis will be a referendum. And I agree with you, Dr. Masanga, 100%, that this is a matter that does not need a legal approach. It is more of a political uh, crisis that needs a political solution. So finding a solution to this problem will need a political approach. And the political approach in this sense, Dr. Masanga, will be more of allowing uh, the people of Biafra or Nigeria, for that matter, to go to a referendum uh, to determine the, their fate. And I think this is something that is anchored in the Nigerian constitution. And why President uh, Buhari cannot allow it to happen uh, begs a lot of uh, questions than asked from the Kamasanga. So my submission would be 
that the late President Buhari really allowed the people of uh, Nigeria to go to this referendum, referendum so that they can determine uh, their fate. I forget the fact. Thank you very much. Daniel Wesonga, are you there now? No. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We started with a lady. She went off. Simon, bring down the curtain for us, please. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Matanga. Uh, actually, everything has been said. But on the, in the process, in the process of saying everything, something has just been revealed here and in fact that is going to take all my interest because this nigeria thing we have talked about it everybody have said it i like the fact that professor lumumba said we have crossed the rubicon and there is no going back and that's a very commendable uh opening uh, closing uh, remark so i want to emphasize on something here today i want especially to be our friends watching this program i am going to make this comment again and maybe for the last time that also for the very first time that mazinam the canon directed me directed me specifically to get lumumba to handle the case and go to work i contacted lumumba lumumba give his consent and the question I want to ask Biafrans today is that why is Professor Lumumba, which Mazen Abdikano by himself directed me to get involved in the case? Why is he not involved today? The every contact needed to get Professor Lumumba to work was given and provided. Why haven't these people contacted Professor Lumumba? I want to leave it here. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much. This is Matanga, Africa Perspective. A program brought to you by Punchline Africa Television. Matanga, Africa Perspective looks at topics that matter to Africa. What ails Africa? What kills Africa? What destroys Africa? Why are we called the black continent? Yet we can improve and change the color. Have we changed or we have not changed? Sixty seconds, seven years of independence. Today, we still have no country talking in the right direction. Most countries in Africa today are talking about it. But do they know what elections are? What is an election in Africa when it will end up by one in power grabbing everything and then you have nothing? What is an election in Africa when people are dying, people sleeping over water, building houses in water, and sleeping on in water? What is it that Africa wants? My show is always coming on Thursday, every Thursday. Watch out for Matanga Africa Perspective every Thursday from 7 o'clock up to 9 o'clock, two hours. Don't hesitate to engage. Don't go away. Don't feel talking is solving the problem. We have understood very many problems for today. I also didn't even know that PLO Mumba, apart from me giving Simon my number, PLO Mumba's number, I did not know that PLO was told by Namdi Khan to be the lawyer. I have learned something here very, very important today. And that is very good if Piero was involved in this case. By now, we would have seen so many things move. And we have found the truth. Where did we go wrong? We want to thank the people. We want everybody. We want to appeal to, to Buhari that the solution of Nigeria being in Nigeria is a political solution, not a military, not a judicial, not a nation. Of opponents who just say they want a right to go away. 
Just as we have did, organized the Congo, we Ugandans have gone in the Congo to, did, to organize the Congo. We believe Nigeria needs organization. The Africans want an independent state. Give it to them. Give it to them. After all, the colonial boundaries just slashed ourselves. I would not be in, in, in I would be if I would be asked by my mother where to produce, where to deliver me from. Simon and the panel, I would have told him, deliver me in London. <laughs> if I had the will to ask my mother, can you deliver? Well, if there was a way God could say, where do you want to be produced? Where do you want to be delivered, born? I would have said, first, in Kenya, the other side of Kenya, not in my country. Because everybody grows the best. I don't think there is anybody on this panel who wants the worst. Everybody wants the best. That's why we go out to But you can't work. You can't have unity. You can't have Pan-Africanism when one country is bleeding. More so, when that one country is the biggest in the population in Africa, 220 million people, would be buying all the goods of Kenya's factory in a week, consume it, and the Kenya will get money. But we are busy fighting our own citizens in Nigeria. We can't buy even Kenyan goods. Kenyans cannot buy Nigerian goods. We only go to AU every year with our soups and the perfumes. And I show the perfumes, the heads of state in Africa. Time has come for you to change the strategy. Give a chance to peace. Give the Biafrans what they want. If not, give a solution to that nation. It is falling. It has fallen apart. Thank you. Thank you very much. This session, therefore, is for Africa. With Africa by Africa, child. Cut, cut. Right, thank you, thank you very much. Welcome back here on the studio. Is our own studio now, and uh, uh, we just have to refresh before we come back to give our viewers uh, what have transpired here today, and then also some of those things, some of those things that uh, some of you do not know. So, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for being part of that program. Uh, one moment. All right, uh, welcome back, welcome back here. We are live and direct. And the, the uh, broadcast from that uh, studio have just ended, and uh, we are live and direct on Enter Biafra Channel One. So before uh, I, you know, end the program, uh, you know, I don't know whether you people got what I said, because sometimes when when something are happening, when things are happening, some people don't know what is going on. Okay. One of the directive is for Professor Lumumba to get involved in the case of our leader, Extraordinary Rendition. It, is a, it was a directive. It was an order by our leader. Direct order by our leader. And everybody have watched it today from the mouth of Professor Lumumba that there are you know, more underground work ought to have been done in our leader case of extraordinary tradition. 
But what happened? They got all the information needed to get Professor Lumumba involved. According to the order of our leader, our leader gave this order. I got involved. I did everything that is required to get him involved. He gave consent to take up, not even to, to get involved in that case. Because what we want is the best. The best for our leader. For those of you who will come and say, Simon Ekpa is only broadcasting. Simon Ekpa is he just, I am just telling you this because the secret came out in this, in this particular interview. Today, ask yourself, what was the interest of the people who disobeyed the directive of Onyendu, of our leader, to get Professor Lumumba involved in his case, in his own case? What did they tell our leader? Why Professor Lumumba is not involved? Or did they tell him that Professor Lumumba is involved in the case? But that was order given by our leader for me to get him involved in the case. Only to get everything required and they abandon him. Today, Professor Lumumba is in the program telling you that something more ought to have been done and it is still there, undone. That is not to say that... Uh, uh, they are not, uh, uh, the people that are handling the case are not handling it well, okay? <laughs> but Professor Lumumba is telling you today publicly that more ought to have been done. So some of you that will always come to attack Simon Ekpa, you don't know what, what you don't know is bigger than you. It has come to the point where we will be punching this tire like this for people to know what is going on. So don't think that you are the only one who is concerned about our leader. A lot of us have done a lot of things and continue to do. And will continue to do until he come out. So I want everybody to post this. On, let it go viral. Why is Professor Lumumba not involved in Mazin Namdekanu's case against his directive? He personally, Mazin Namdekanu, our leader, personally want Professor Lumumba to get involved in the case. Why they didn't involve him? Thank you very much. May God bless you.